Nuveen, the asset management arm of TIAA, expects strong federal support for sustainability under a Biden administration and sees opportunity in clean energy, green tech, infrastructure, and real estate. Joining us now to discuss is Nuveen CEO Jose Manaya. He oversees more than $1 trillion in assets. Jose, thanks for joining us. One, one question I always have about some of these ESG funds that are attracting so much attention and in many cases really good performance is how do you pick what goes in them? Because I, I was just looking at one, the Nuveen ESG mid-cap growth has Twilio and Slack, not, not necessarily what you would think of as major ESG players. So what's the criteria? Yeah, and I, and I would say the discussion around ESG is twofold, right? I mean, look, of course, we manage almost 30 billion in, in uh, ESG labeled uh, products. And there, there's a, they've been around for a long time. There's a mythology of kind of which benchmarks you use, the criteria. But I think where the real discussion is and where we see opportunities is that that narrative is changing. It used to be about investors coming and saying, look, uh, I'm willing to pay a higher fee and I understand I'm going to get a lower return by going into these products. That discussion today is more around they're expecting lower fees and higher returns and that you're going to drive alpha from this. We recently moved 100 percent of that trillion dollar plus in AUM to be informed by ESG risk factors, right? Because we believe understanding those risks, managing them in your portfolio is a way to drive alpha, right? And you've seen a perfect storm also in the marketplace where whether it's your shareholders, uh, your clients, um, people are requesting and, and looking to see how firms manage these risks. And now it's about the alpha testing of how that compares. And you are seeing, and we, we're seeing within our own funds, increased flows, outperformance, but we're saying that that should be part of the overall uh, uh, portfolio and platform. But, but it's hard to tell. I guess my, my question is, what criteria do you look at to determine whether a company is meeting certain ESG goals and qualifies to be in these funds and, and have the right priorities when it comes to these issues? Well, again, I, I, if you separate the two, if you think about an ESG-focused fund, there's typically already a predisposed uh, benchmark and in indexing that says, here are the companies you can choose. Then it's a question of, do you have the right uh, the good portfolio managers that within that universe that's already pre-identified are picking the best ones. And again, for us, it's really, again, even if it's not in an ESG portfolio, is looking across the, the markets and depending on what industry you're in, what company you are, what are the most material financial factors, right? It might be in real estate, it might be the carbon footprint of, of buildings, right? That uh, the more efficient they are, the lower they're going to be in, 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 their, in their expense side. Uh, they're going to attract better tenants uh, and, and charge higher rents. If we're looking at an agricultural company, it might be how efficient are they in, uh, in utilizing water. Uh, but again, it goes back to what are those material factors um, and how are these companies uh, utilizing them? And the better performing firms are the ones that are more proactive on identifying and, 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 and managing these uh, risk factors. Jose, if I could pivot uh, for one second, I'd like to, to an area that you've been interested in. And it wasn't all that long ago that you guys were making a decent sized play in the urbanization trend, which has been sort of turned on its head, if you will, by the pandemic. And I'm, I'm wondering how you think that impacts that area of alternative investing moving forward. You know, I think it's alive and well. And I think one of the biggest things for us and how we build our portfolio was diversification, right? If you think about urban trends, it was around global cities and what cities are growing, which ones are, are shrinking. But it was also around a thesis around inelastic demand and inelastic supply, these areas where you can still find alpha. You think about it in the real estate space, right? So you might be challenged in retail and office today, yet industrial, logistical uh, uh, properties, um, uh, you know, uh, life sciences are doing well. Uh, in farmland, even even through this pandemic, people still have to eat, right? So there's still that, again, demand supply strain that is helping to add uh, value. And again, these are strategies that provide you current income today in a much, much lower volatility and really good correlated returns, right? Uh, where over in the last decade, the fact that most of our strategies there are called it high single digits, low double digits, they weren't that attractive relative to what was going on in the markets. You look at an environment today where you see the volatility that, that we're dealing with, rates are going to be lower for even longer. And the, your, the need to diversify your portfolio, um, uh, where if you stayed with a traditional 70, 30, 80, 20, whatever the split is in a mm -hmm. traditional portfolio, over the next 10 years, you're likely not going to hit your target mandates. It's going to be looking at some of these more esoteric asset classes. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.